Dying Inside by Robert Silverberg. So this is episode 40 of a series I'm doing called The Masterpieces of Science Fiction. And this book was copyright 1972. Now, Robert Silverberg, he was kind of part of this new wave of science fiction. And some of the new wave authors were writing about things like sex and drugs and all kinds of topics that kind of weren't brought up before. And this this book is kind of along those lines. There's, there's plenty of sex. There's plenty of um, drugs in this book. So fair warning there. Also, um, I have this reprint version. I like to warn people, whenever you're reading these reprints of classics, I wouldn't read the introduction at first. And that's what I did. I skipped the introduction. I read the book. I went back and read the introduction, and it was super insightful, but it totally would have spoiled some of my reading experience of the book. So just keep that in mind. And if you do go to read this version, wait to read the introduction until afterwards. Also, I did remember this book. When, when I was a kid back in my teens, I tried reading this book, and I don't think I made it very far. I definitely remember some parts in the beginning. But I will say, I think this book will um, provide more insight to a more mature reader. I'm not saying that a younger reader won't enjoy it, but one of the main themes of this book is kind of, you know, aging, going, getting to middle age and stuff. And so I think that there's a, a level of enjoyment that comes um, with age in this book. So... Let's just go ahead and get into the plot. The plot's pretty easy to describe. This book is all written from the first person point of view of our main character, and his name is David Selig. And he has this unique telepathic ability. Um, he can receive thoughts and from pretty much anybody, but he but no one can read his thoughts. And we find out, you know, he's kept this power secret most of his life. And for better or for worse, that plays a big role into the, the, the story here. But really, when we, when we start this book, we find him approaching middle age. And we find out that this power is kind of starting to diminish over time. And he, like I said, he's approaching middle age. And how he makes his living is... He goes down to Columbia University in New York and he finds students that need papers written and he charges three to four dollars a page to write these like English papers for I think it's mostly like English students. This was a passion of his. He was an academic and so he's found this way to make a living and you're kind of thinking to yourself you know with those powers you, th you think there could be more that this person could do with his life. But this is where he's at. But, you know, he uses those powers for everything, even for writing these papers. He, when he's talking to someone about what this paper needs to be about, he sneaks into their head and pokes around, and then he can kind of tailor the prose of the paper for the student, and he guarantees like a B plus, or you get your money back. And so, that's kind of the, the main setup when you start this book, but as you read through it, you there's little bits of information thrown out, and then you constantly get our main character kind of reminiscing or telling stories about his whole life, from childhood all the way up to the present time. And there's some really interesting stories in here from our main character. Like when he was a kid and his parents sent him to a psychologist. Pretty interesting when he's digging around in the psychologist's head. So that was pretty neat. There's some um, things with friends, family, uh, girlfriends. There's quite a bit of drug use in this book. Maybe not as much as the sexual content, but there's this one really kind of crazy part where him and his girlfriend didn't want to take LSD at the same time. They were kind of afraid that they'd both freak out. So she did, and he didn't. But then when he kind of used his abilities, it kind of did this really interesting, weird thing. So there's just a lot of that in this book. Um, 
it, it doesn't seem like that there's a lot to the book. I mean, it's 250 pages and that's kind of, I've kind of told you the whole premise, but there's just so much more to it than that. It's, it's really about being inside this guy's head and also being inside other people's head heads through his perspective. It's, it's very unique. It's done really well. And it kind of, um, it kind of shows that there's pros and cons to this ability. Most people would think this would just be nothing but um, positive, but there's there's some cons to this, and that becomes a major theme of the book. And even as he's aging and starting to lose this ability, he still is worried about this. This is kind of like part of him, and he's losing it. And what will he be without that? And so that's really what the book is really gets into. And I know everybody is going to read this book and have different takeaways because you are spending so much time in this kind of like stream of consciousness of this character and these other people that, yeah, it's just, it's just, everyone's going to take, have a different take on, on some of these themes. So I really enjoyed it. Um, the ending was good. The, the whole thing flowed well. I think one of the biggest positives for this book, though, is, is really Robert Silverberg's ability to write. Um, not only is his prose really good and flows effortlessly, but the way he kind of unraveled the layers as you read through the book of this character, it was just done in a really, really good, masterful way. Robert Silverberg is a grandmaster of science fiction, and I've mostly read a lot of his short stories, but a book like this really shows the, the skill of the craft that he has. Sometimes I've thought about writing books. I've tried. My prose is horrible, um, but I'll read other books from other authors sometimes, and I'm like, I could write this, you know? But when it came to this one, I'm sitting there just in awe going, Maybe I'm not cut out to be an author because I don't see any way I could ever write at this level. So he, he's an amazing writer. If, if, you've, if you're a fan of my channel and science fiction, you haven't read this, give it a read. I will say, you know, there's a little bit on the sexism side that didn't age too well. There's one spot in particular that has to do with one of these students and a racial kind of thing that definitely didn't age very well. But I mean, normally it's I'm willing to give these these books a pass. This was written in the 70s. It was kind of people were starting to kind of go away from that, but there's still a little bit of that in here. It's not too bad. It didn't really take away from my overall enjoyment of this the book. It's definitely a four-star read for me. Maybe pushing up to a five, but you know, that's that's it. That's that's where we're at there. It's a great book. And next, what I'm on to is Burning Chrome by William Gibson. I was going to go straight into Neuromancer, but I want to like that book so badly that I'm doing everything I can to kind of prepare myself for it. And as I was kind of getting ready to read it, I was doing a little Googling on some things, and some people recommended reading this because it's a collection of short stories. There's three short stories in here that are part of this um, Sprawl trilogy or kind of tied in, I think some of the characters, some of the settings. And I think it's also gonna give me a chance to kind of get used to his writing style and prose because it's definitely very different. So that'll be my next review video coming out. So look for that one coming out soon. And once again, thanks for watching.